Hi, this is a brief introduction on how to add GIS data to a, a blank map. So you can see when we open up our Arc, uh, ArcGIS Pro, I'm going to click on Map, and I can add a brand new map, and I'm going to create a, a brand new project here. I'm just going to call this Tim's Map. And for default, it's saved in my uh, documents, ArcGIS Projects. It'll ask me if I want to save the previous one, and I can click No. So there's a lot of different places where we can store data, and I'll I'll just mention these really briefly. But under Map, I can click on Add Data. And the first place that I can look is data actually sitting on my hard drive. And so I can go down to my computer. Typically in the past, this is the type of data that I've liked to work with that I've stored in brand new, uh, brand new uh, file geodatabases or databases. But I can click on, say, I can go to Temp, and I can look at all the different types of data we have here. So you can see I've got some XLS data, GIS data new, QA, QC. These are all GIS compatible formats. In addition, I have something called a shape file. These are a little bit more older school that are combinations of multiple files like DBS, SHP files that go into, that highlight uh, spatial GIS data. You can see some drone imagery that's probably uncorrected. But these are all the different types of data that I can add to my GIS, some in spatial format, some not in spatial format. I'm going to look at a couple of these uh, spatial databases right here. I'm going to click on QAQC. And you can see that I have GIS data here as well. Here's another one here. And I've got a standalone table. So I can click on this, and you can see my standalone tables that we've talked about. I can click on my add GIS data as well. And I have a, uh, th these are wood, uh, North Carolina block groups in, say, wood pellet plants. And I can hold the control button and add both of those. And you can see me add all the individual North Carolina blocks to these. So now I've got data that's actually sitting on my computer. I can right mouse click and open my attribute table as well. And you can see information about those. In addition, I can, in addition, I can click on the actual name. So if I go and click on the actual, click on explore, click on this. And this is what we call identify. This is the wood pellet plants. This is the wood pellet plant in North in uh, Sampson County. I can zoom into these as well, and I might be able to get an individual FIPS code here. So I can click on this, and it'll give me a, a FIPS code, a block ID, a uh, total population for the year 2010 for this particular block as well. So this is high quality, high scale uh, block data. Now, what we've been doing in the past here is migrating away from data sitting on computer that could be lost or corrupted in some way, shape, and form. And other ways that we can add data when I look at this dialog, first of all, I can look at the database. So this is the actual database that we're looking at. This is the newly created database. You can see when I created it. So if, if I were to extract and export data, I would put it into this file geo database as well. And I've got folders here as well. Other things that I have here that are sitting in portal or cloud-based GIS data is content. So now I can click on all of these. Now, if I'm signed in here, I go up to the top and sign in. You can see all the data that belongs to me that I've saved in ArcGIS Online. So I've signed in as this particular user. Now I'm able to add these data. So I can click on Landmarks. And these are landmarks that I've been collecting uh, using my phone as a essentially a GPS unit. So you can see a, a couple of the places that I've collected here this one place here, and I can click on the little I button, and you can see this is mine, and I actually have a, a picture attached to it. So this is a picture of my office right here. I'll zoom into another one. So in addition to storing storing spatial information, also stores uh, information, and I would imagine in some type of blob, binary, large object format. And then I've got another one here near my house. And these are data sitting on the cloud right now as we speak. I've got this button here. This is the uh, collector name, uh, name description. This is the photo that I've collected here, and this is the uh, my playground uh, playground for my for my kids. And I can add multiple layers here as well. So I can click Add Data, and I've got a base map as well. So these are data, my content, my personal content that I have, and that I've created over the course of uh, the last uh, year or so. 
I've got my favorites, and I'll visit, revisit this in a second. These are my groups. I've created a, uh, a class group, and these are just the data that I've uh, created for my particular group. And then these are the data, since I'm an administrator, these are all the data created by my organization. And so I can click on Find Items here. So I have someone named NCC Richie that created something back in November. I have someone, these landmarks that I've been working on. I have in-class exercise web feature layer. This is a web feature hosted layer that I've created. And you can see a number of people have are creating features here in the cloud that they have permissions to. So these are really powerful data that we're allowed to access that are part of the organization since you or I may have access to these. In addition, we have ArcGIS Online. And so these are all people that have made their data publicly available. So I have something called, you know, earthquakes, Esri Live Feed. So this might be something I can add. Click OK. And these are all recent earthquakes. And I can zoom out and see exactly where these are. Some of these may be useful, some of these may not. But now we can see the attribution for these because when people create and publish these, they can set the permissions as to whether you're able to export these. So if I can right mouse click and go to sharing or export these, I can't export these. I can save as a layer file, which has limited functionality, but under mine, I can right mouse click and go on data, export features for anyone to use. So these data, cre the data creators, and in this case, Esri, or the other case myself, we can set the permissions as to who's able to export those, how we symbolize those, and what permissions people have for these. Another type of way I can click on my add data is the Living Atlas. And this is uh, created by Esri that's a little bit more specific, that has, a, to me, a little bit more higher quality data. So if I want to type in the word, say, poverty, I want to look up poverty rates. And then you can see from Esri Demographics, these are the poverty boundaries. So this has got high quality data that I can add and look at here. And so I can zoom in here at the state level. You notice now I can start to zoom in on these and you can see I can highlight these at the track level. So now I can click on this little I button and it tells me all information about this at the track level here. And this is real high quality data as well, using these boundaries. And if I wanted to, you can see sharing, export these, zoom in, zoom out on these as well. So some of these are going to have limited functionality. And I can maybe do some select right here. I can highlight these, and if I really wanted to, I could go to data export these particular features here and put them into my own database that I'm working with instead of me working with the entire uh, entire layer or set or whatever I'm working with here. Uh, these are scale dependent, so if I'm zoomed out, it's not going to render all of the tracks. Another thing that I have here, if I go to View, Catalog Pane, and I go over here, and I'm going to uncheck these data sitting from um, Living Atlas, I click on favorites. These are data, these are services sitting somewhere on someone else's server that I've created before. So I've done this for our own personal data here as well. So these are some of the data that we've created and published. So you can see that landmarks data that we've, we've published. But these are some data created by the North Carolina NC1 map, which is the publisher of GIS data. So I can click on imagery, and now this is all the imagery published by NC1 map. And so if I want to look at flood boundaries or education, and I can just drag this to my table of contents. And now we're looking at all the education in North Carolina using the attribution that they have or that's appropriate for them. And so there's a number of different servers out there. And you can add these items using new ArcGIS server, new WCS, web map service, web feature service. And these are just, so if I click on this new um, ArcGIS server, I, I need to put in the URL. And if there's any username and password or authentication attached to it as well. And it'll be added here. And if I wanted to for this North Carolina one map, I can add this to my project. 
instead, instead of me going here, now I can go to Map, Add Data. And now when I look at my servers, it's sitting right here. So now this is part of my default Add Data. So in conclusion, there's a number of different ways, and I can highlight these maps as well. In conclusion, there's a number of different ways that we can add data. So we can create an actual GIS database and export those that can sit on your hard drive or thumb drive or external hard drive or whatnot. And those get big really quickly. We can add data from the cloud, and there's a couple of ways you can do that. You can add your own data, data from a group, data from your organization, data from the Living Atlas or ArcGIS Online as well, you can connect to GIS services. So I implore people to take advantage of all the different data sources out there because if there's poverty data sitting out there, you don't need to go and add it yourself. You can extract it from an existing GIS data set that already exists published by Esri for your own needs for your particular county or your particular study area.